our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition. A chapter in the history of space ends with the retirement of the Space Shuttle. Ten seconds. Six. And lift off. The Space Shuttle is considered one of the most complex machines ever designed. Discovery Houston, go and throttle up. In 30 years, it completed 135 missions, transporting most of the material required to construct the ISS. In the calm of southern Germany, we met ESA's former human spaceflight director. The shuttle uh, merits will stay forever and the, the basic merit of the shuttle is that it was the first transportation system that went up and down. He remembers how the American shuttle was originally designed as a commercial vehicle to offer flights into orbit around the Earth. The Americans expected it would fly once per week so 50 flights per year and uh, and this and then the expectation was that it would become very cheap much cheaper uh, than than with a, a launching system uh, but finally it unfortunately turned out that it was much more expensive and not much cheaper but the expectation was that uh, it would be a real revolution for for space transportation the roots of the project stretch all the way back to the 50s. The aim was to make the wings disappear so that the shuttle looked more like a rocket than a plane, although it would land like a plane. The results weren't always impressive. Finally, at the beginning of the 70s, the design began to take shape and they were ready for the first launch. On the 12th of April 1981, the Columbia shuttle made its first successful orbital flight, but there were problems on the horizon. To bring a plane up to a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour when you go to orbit and to bring it down to zero again when you re-enter, the space shuttle gets more than 2,000 degrees hot. And so with this enormous amount of heat, uh, there was a lot of uh, small but uh, a lot of important destruction also on tiles and other elements of the plane. So it turned out that it took half a year or even more to, to get the space shuttle back to flight. Everything about the space shuttle is big, starting with the main reservoirs of liquid oxygen and hydrogen which fuel the main engines. Then there are two long boosters which burn their powder in two minutes in order to leave the Earth's gravity and separate from the main rocket. The orbiter, the space plane, completes the takeoff equipment, 56 meters high, weighing more than 2,000 tons and costing around $1.7 billion. Each launch cost around $450 million. Crews varied from two to seven astronauts, according to the payload. Takeoff wasn't as rough as all that. It's like Space Mountain at Disneyland. One and a half Gs feels like being pushed from behind, pushed in your back, because we're lying on our backs in our seats with the plane pointing its nose straight up into the sky. So it's only the sensation of 50% more of your weight. I remember this sensation of power, the strength of this force, which was pushing us into space, rather than the feeling of being uncontrollably shaken about in all directions. The Paris Air Show always attracts lots of people eager to see the latest developments. This year, Jean-François Clairvoy presented the Zero G, an Airbus equipped to make reduced gravity flights. He flew three times in the space shuttle. In these uh, 135 flights then, uh, we had uh, 
29 missions with European astronauts. So that means uh, even not having your, our own transportation system, we had uh, 29 Europeans that were flying on board of the shuttle. The first European astronaut to fly aboard the space shuttle was German astronaut Ulf Meerbold in 1983 in the framework of the Space Lab program. A module designed by the Europeans and installed in the hold of the shuttle resulted in 29 weightless scientific missions which demonstrated the capacity of the shuttle as well as establishing a new era of international cooperation in space. The Space Shuttle was also involved in servicing the Hubble Space Telescope. These four missions were carried out at an altitude of 600 kilometers, which is close to the shuttle's operational limits. Many European astronauts took part, including Claude Nicolier from Switzerland, who helped to correct some technical faults in the main mirror. The shuttle also flew to the ISS, taking and bringing back both supplies and personnel. You know that uh, Europe's contribution to the International Space Station is in the order of 8%. Now, uh, if I'm looking at our technical capabilities, our scientific capabilities, the industrial capabilities that are here, our technologies, this is not really uh, equivalently represented in our participation. Almost 50% of the inhabited volume of ISS is built in Europe. Thomas Reiter was the first European astronaut to spend six months aboard the International Space Station. But there have been tragedies. Two fatal accidents which cast doubt on the Space Shuttle's reliability. In both cases, the accidents were not caused by the orbiter, the space plane, but by a management fault caused by technical deficiencies in the launching system. The lift off of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. In 1986, shortly after takeoff, the Challenger exploded, killing all seven astronauts on board. The subsequent investigation showed that one of the boosters had been cracked by freezing temperatures the night before the launch. The possibility of an accident had been acknowledged, but it had been decided to go ahead with the launch despite the risks. In 2003, the Columbia Space Shuttle disintegrated during its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Parts of the tiles which insulated the large reservoir had come loose during takeoff, damaging the thermal protection system. The Space Shuttle was grounded for months after each accident, leaving the Russian Soyuz to fill the gap. Soyuz is very, very tight. You have approximately um, uh, one and a half cubic meters for three adult persons. You are crammed in, you are sitting in contour seats with your knees pulled back. Soyuz is another living legend in the history of space exploration. The first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, made his orbit of the Earth in a Soyuz rocket. Since then, it has proved its reliability over and over again. But it has its limits. This is really one of the big drawbacks after the last flight of the shuttle to bring payloads back. The Soyuz can break back only about 50 kilograms. So for three to four years, we will have a really uh, bottleneck in returning payloads from ISS. After numerous hesitations, the space shuttle finally went back into service in 2005. NASA began building its successor, the Orion, which will be piloted by a crew of four and be able to bring back larger loads to Earth. It will also probably be used for manned moon missions. The Orion capsule or its successor, which is called MPCV, multi-purpose uh, crew vehicle, that um, uh, is one element and a second element needed could be derived from the ATV service module. The ATV is the automatic module constructed by ESA to supply the ISS. Able to carry nearly eight tons of cargo, it currently disintegrates in the atmosphere with all the rubbish from the ISS. It might be possible to develop a reusable model to bring the results of scientific experiments back to Earth. We don't know if this is really the solution for the future, but it could be one. 
and for that we start a discussion with NASA. Um, let's see how this will run. Um, I think in terms of an international cooperation, this could be a very good sign of uh, the fact that in future, a human spaceflight, human exploration will be an international endeavor where Europe uh, has uh, a role to play. After 30 years, the final flight of the Atlantis ends the historic reign of the Space Shuttle. But it will remain a benchmark in space exploration. I think for all of those who have been uh, not only flying in the shuttle, but who have profited from its uh, capabilities, this will be um, a sad moment. and. Um, it needs to take a look at the future because uh, it is a fact that the shuttle will end and new things will develop. We'll see it as a king of spacecrafts in the history of space. And it remains close to my heart because it brought me back from space three times, safe and sound. And nose gear touchdown. Space Shuttle Atlantis now comes home to the Kennedy Space Center for the final time. 25 years, 32 flights, and more than 120 million miles. I think it, it will be a, a, a very interesting future for our scientists and engineers but decisions will have to come in the in the next years